Hello everyone, I'm here to talk about the hat. I'm sorry, I'm not as uh, theatrical and dramatic as Adrian. I have to learn from that style. But I, will wa I do want to tell you about something that's very near and dear to my heart um, in terms of data and to introduce you to you the hat. Today, we, data belongs to those who collect it. That's the world we know today. If you bought something from the supermarket, your date that's collected about you, what you bought, when you bought it, is owned by the supermarket simply because without the technology to collect that data, it won't, it won't exist. And we, we forget the existence of data, the supply of data is as important. If the supermarkets and the finance company and the health companies decide today to give us all back our data, we might not even know what to do with it. What are you going to do aggregating a bunch of CSV files? But actually, you know what? All of you in the room probably know what to do with it because you're in a computational social science conference. But a normal person may not. And the reason for that is because the data collected is of a format and representation that is there to aid the company and the technology that, com that collected it. Quite reasonably, data collected about you in buying at the supermarket is about its linkages to the supply chain, it's about its linkages to inventory. It's not about how it can help you. And it's the same with all other institutions. So basically, what we, this is what we call vertical data. As we become more digital and more connected, we now start to see a more diverse set of data from different transactions, different movements, different kind of devices. Through Internet of Things, we're giving we're, even more data is being generated. The economics will call it an externality, and one of the biggest externality of the digital economy is the generation of petabytes of personal data. The other externality of a digital economy as a consequence of all this data is the fact that we become increasingly worried about privacy, confidentiality, security and trust. Some of us who are so worried might decide that we want to withdraw our digital visibility. We cancel our Facebook accounts. My tech boys down in Cambridge, they created Tor, you know, um, very secure browser. We stopped using Google, which I use Google to bamboozle and by, by finding out what the answers of crossword puzzles are, right? And so we, we try to do all these things. What happens then is that two things happen. One, data is getting increasingly noisy. Now you're all in a computational science conference, you know what that means. So I'm not going to explain that. We also have the problem of shrinking supply. So just imagine you are in a very nice uh, area in Russia or Africa and, they, and you were given this piece of land that you can mine for diamonds, you know? And then this land slowly, you know, the di diamonds you're digging up, the quality is getting sort of worse and worse and worse. And so that's a little bit like that. And because of the potential shrinking supply of data, potential noise that comes from the data, you have then government saying this is a problem, this is privacy is an issue, maybe we should regulate. With the threat of regulation, companies may not be innovating, we don't get cool stuff, and then we get even more worried with the stuff out there. This whole thing has a way of ending badly for everyone, for the economy, for the firms, and for individuals. This is the downward spiral, less business opportunities, less jobs, shrinking economy. So how do we reverse this? How do we help the digital economy spiral upwards? I'll introduce the HAT project. If you go to hubofallthings.com, it will tell you a little bit about it. We're 1.2 million pound funded under New Economic Models in the Digital Economy, RCUK funding, six universities, 20 researchers and increasing and a whole sort of companies um, we take on the three challenges that need to be solved simultaneously to create an upward spiral. And how do we try to do that? Can I just say this is scholarly work, so of course, you know, this could just not work. <laughs> um, so, 
The first, of course, is privacy, confidentiality, plus shrinking supply. We're building a human database where the data is owned by you. Remember I said data is usually owned by the technology that collects it? Fine. Why don't I give you the technology? And I give you a technology. And I'll give you a technology. You go and collect all the data out there about yours, about you, and bring it in. And it's your database owned by you and no one else. So what we're suggesting is you should have a hat. If you have an email, you should have a hat to collect all the different data that you'd like to have. And that solves the privacy issue. And you can then perhaps view it as a digital asset that could possibly be valuable and useful and tells us how much tomatoes you ate last year, how much sugar you've been consuming. I don't know. Whatever data you'd like to feel is important for you. And if we make the data useful for ourselves, we want it to be as accurate as possible and we would like it to be of good quality. So the trick of not just shrinking supply and quality is the use of the data by us. The second thing we try to do is to convert that value, that, that raw vertical data into horizontal data. And it's an illustration. I'll give you an example. You've got a data point when you wake up, and that's the temperature in your room. Then you have temperature in the, in the car, temperature in your office, and now temperature outside. So literally, if you've got a diary for the day, you could have the temperature of every place you go through for today. But what you really want to know when you woke up this morning at 6.30, really, should I bring my jacket? Now, the answer to that, which is a human decision, is not to do with the temperature data points out there, which exist, but the way the data is collected and transformed. And, so, and when we try to aggregate vertical data and try to make sense of it, it's like trying to aggregate scar, uh, snowfall and try to predict snow drift. One is essentially very vertical, the other is essentially very, very horizontal about how human lives are led. And so what we try to do is we build a particular model of the database that acquires different kind of vertical data into a horizontal type of a database schema that allows for human decision making. But then, if you collect your own data and it's useful for you, it still doesn't touch the economy. It doesn't contribute back to the GDP. It's like taking your data or taking your money and putting it into your mattress. Hiding all your money in your mattress. You don't spend it, you're not contributing to the economy. So we want you to take the data and do something with it. What can you do with it? Buy apps. There is an app that links chicken in your fridge to the sat-nav in your car that tells you that maybe there's not enough chicken in your fridge. Tesco is in two minutes, turn off now. The schema allows that to be possible, but then you need to buy an app for that, buy a service for that. So the hat is not just a transformation database, but it also is a platform for market where companies can build apps to help you analyze your own data. They don't own it. So you can buy apps to visualize, to analyze. Um, we do have within the hat project behavioral scientists, market economists, computer scientists, ethnographers, it's quite a big team. And of course, it's not an easy project, but then they, they gave us 1.2 million, so I guess we, we better do something about it. So we are working for both sides. We're working for the individual and as well as working for the firms. We are about market making, standard economics of multi-sided platform. The platform has to be free to create maximum positive externalities and to create maximum network effect. The platform has to be free and trustworthy. You can make a lot of money out of www as search. You can make a lot of money out of the hat as some app that helps you match your wardrobe to Zara's rate of sale. But the hat itself as a platform has to be free. So the hat is therefore about market making and it's about building your own repository of horizontal data and then buying services to visualize, analyze, and maybe trade that data with supermarkets to get better discount, better matches, personalized products of the future. Um, this is the three multi-sided markets that exist on the hat. I'm not going to bore you with the details. Please uh, ask me. I'll be happy to send you the Prezi. And this is one of the consumption-based data that we collected. Take a guess what this is. You got two seconds. One, two. It starts with 450 grams and it goes down and up again. Consumption, what do you consume at home? That's 450 grams. Toilet paper. 
I did that at the NSF conference in the US, and it was hilarious. Okay? This is science, right? Um, but it is important because it's a microcosm of the world of which whatever we consume and the data of which we consume can help us buy. In helping us buy, we touch the GDP. We create jobs, we create job opportunities, employment, new startups, new business. If you know how to code, get an app on the hat now. You'll be the next Google. Uh, as a conclusion, this is a shameless plug of my book. Available at good bookstores everywhere. Thank you. Um, we've also procured uh, further five, half a million pound funding for putting the hat into 20 homes in Birmingham. So if you want to know more, please contact me. Thank you very much. I made it. <laughs> that timer. <laughs> Questions? What are some of the real world applications that you're seeking for this in terms of... Oh, right. So yeah. you know what's the biggest company on WWW? What's the biggest company on WWW? Search. Yeah, well, Google search, yeah. search. Yeah, right. So what do you think is the biggest company on hat? We'd like to think Match. Because you will have my wardrobe data, my consumption data, my feed data, a lot of data about me. You could find, you could be algorith algorithmically suggesting to me what my shopping habits are for the next three months. Much, much better precision in terms of the way we buy. And so we think that when we round it off and it's not just point of sale scanner data now we're looking at, we're looking at actual real consumption data, that the biggest algorithms that are going to be battling it out there are those who are most precise in being able to match what we do to what we buy. Yeah, we think that that probably will be big. So then this is uh, seeking, trying to um, create interest so that companies come in and create tools that will help Yeah, so 17th of July, we have the Matt Hatters, the first Matt Hatter Tea Party. We invite all the VCs, the startups, the, all the ones who seed and accelerate uh, startups to, to, and developers in. So please go to the website, it's the first Matt Hatters Tea Party. And we also talk about, we are, we are releasing the first, uh, the database model version one on a Creative Commons attribute, no derivative 4.0 license. Yes? I was just wondering what the plans are for security because I, am, I would be less, um, well, I am worried if somebody gets into my bank account, but I'd be seriously worried if somebody comes up with what gets a hold of my data because I don't mind that I have a little bit of data on Google, a little bit of data on Facebook or Flickr, but this is like everything about me. So um, how do you gain that trust? So, yeah, no, I'm not, not going to show you the nine more. So if you go, um, there are three models for the HAT database. Now, we are the people who create the data, uh, the schema and the dictionary and everything. But there are three potential models of which you can go into implementation. Number one is what we call the hard hat model, which is you have a box. It's made of steel. You put it in your house and everybody, you access it from a little cable and you can unplug. So basically a fixed server with a fixed IP address in your house. We wouldn't suggest that, right? Or two, you choose a cloud provider that you feel you like. Because remember, we don't provide the hat. We provide the infrastructure of the hat. You will have a hat provider the way you have an email provider. So you could have a cloud provider for the hat, and you put everything in the cloud. But the third one that we're currently developing, if you go to NYMOTE, which is N-Y-M-O-T-E dot org, it is a distributed security system that lets everywhere, let, let the data that you have wherever it is, whether it's your personal data in Vodafone, in BT, in, in the university, wherever it is, stay where they are. And all it is, is, is into, integrating the different disparate type of distributed uh, data into a place where you can view, only for viewing. And so that makes a better, a distributed uh, infrastructure is always better for security. And we're building that right now, go to 9Mode. It's not part of the HAT project, it's adjacent to it, but we're, we've been chasing the 9Mode people for the plugin. Yeah. 